All right, today we've got a very special interview, man. Tommy, 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 Tommy <laughs> Robertson. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, obviously for some people who may not know you, who are a bit younger, uh, who are you? Who am I? I am, I'm, what am I now? I'm 40, bruv. I was 40 last week. Well done. Yeah, I know. I don't feel 40. Do I look 40? Um... I'll say you mentioned 30s, 30s. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm 40. And, um, Happy birthday, by the way, as well. Cheers, thanks. Mm-hmm. I started my activism when I was 25. It's when I formed an, a group called the English Defence League. Okay. Now, anyone just hearing that name is going to have an opinion of it based on what the media have told them, yeah? which is total bullshit. Right. So from the minute we formed that organisation, which will surprise a lot of people, is we formed that organisation in Luton Town in, in opposition to what I'd witnessed in my life growing up in that town. A town plagued by Islamic extremism. Yeah. Plagued by terrorism, plagued by rape gangs, all these problems, problems that were specific. Luton Town, if you know it, is one of the most multicultural towns in this, in this country. Um, white English people are a minority. I grew up with every culture and every race and every religion you can think of. And all of them gelled together, apart from one, which was the Islamic community. Yeah? I'm not saying every Muslim, well, yeah, yeah. but I'm saying they divided themselves and separated themselves in a way like no one else. So you line all my friends up, all of us are sons of immigrants, Yeah, all of us get on great. But then there was one community at school all the way through that we'd witnessed that was very different. And I only as I got further on in life, I started understanding why it's different when I started understanding Islam. But that, So I, I formed a group in opposition after a soldier's homecoming. I began talking about issues that no one wants to talk about or people are too scared to talk about because they get cancelled. Not just cancelled, people want to hurt you. They want to violently attack you. Um, there's certain things you can say, can't say, or you're not supposed to say, or people are too scared to say. So, and then that blew us onto the stage under the English Defence League. You would have been told if you're listening to it, listening or you've heard of the English Defence League, especially if you've been through the education system, you'd have been told they were a far right racist organisation. Mm. But you've been told that everyone, what do you, what, let me ask you what you think. What, what do you think? What, what's, your, what's your knowledge of the English Defence League? My, oh, wait, can you speak a bit? Yeah, what's, what's your knowledge of the English Defence League? Um, so, obviously, I've, I've learned a bit, even yesterday I went on a whole rabbit hole just sort of reading about it, watching it and whatnot. I do, I personally do think a lot of people in EDL are likely racist. What and makes you think that? What makes you think that? It's like, from my experience, I feel like a lot of the people in the EDL, yeah. they're not in it to stop grooming gangs. Okay. Like, that it's just the fact that the people perpetrating those those vile attacks on Muslims yeah. and people of Pakistani descent or Asian descent. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, but like even do you know what's mad? Because it was mm. called the English Defence League. If you lined up 10 members of the English Defence League and you said, why are you here? They'd all be there for a different reason. So it's a very loose name, which some people would be coming against certain immigration. Some people come because of groomings. And, and, and when people say, were well, they racist in the EDL? Yeah, of course it was. Yeah. Right? There's, there's racists in the Metropolitan Police Force. There's racists. There's golfers in the EDL. We didn't make it a golf society. Yeah. And any racists that there were were kicked out yeah, and, and shown their way. At every single English Defence League demonstration from the time it started, a non white person spoke at every one of them. Yeah. Because it was built on the ethos of where I've been brought up and my views. Yeah. And we made it very clear from the, from the offset, which the media, so we'd be doing this. We'd be kicking out any racists or Nazis, literally physically at war with them. Yeah. And the media would be telling everyone, they're Nazis. So they'd be advertising the group to racists to come along. We'd be then trying to kick the racists out. And we had that battle for the first few years. But it was a bit, I, I, I believe it was a very important organisation that had to form. And it's, it's played its part in raising issues. Many people lost jobs, careers, uh, were attacked, were imprisoned um, to push a message. The best thing that's come out of it is that the grooming that you're you're well aware of now. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was no one was aware of it when we started the English Defence League. There was no word grooming. Yeah. There were no there were no big cases being prosecuted by police. In fact, there was no one talking about it. So yeah. Anyway. No, I I heard I heard. Uh, but for example, even even when how I brought up about a lot of people, you know, that even when I I I said I believe that a lot of people in the the are racist. For example. I remember when you were part of Pegida. What was it? Pegida? It originated in Germany. Oh, Pegida. Pegida. Pegi- yeah, Pegida. Pegida. Like even I watched the Channel 4 uh, interviews with you and the other guy. I forgot. Scott? Oh, God, that's painful, bruv. And, and oh, was it, wasn't it painful? Did you? Yeah. It, it was, was very painful. Oh. Do you know what that was? That was, that, that was I'd left the English Defence League. I'd gone to jail. I'd promised my wife at the time and children a bit of normality. I'd come out of jail and I'd seen Pegida blow up. Pegida hmm. blew up in, Amer- in Germany at the start of the yeah. refugee crisis. And I sent someone out to. I sent someone out. So when I read the media, I used to read it about us, and I see racists, extremists, Nazis, all this crap. It's bullshit. Yeah. So I sent someone out to Germany and said, "Go and look at this group. 
tell, come back and report on me what they're like. And he come back and said, they're great. He said, they're all normal people, yeah? They're, they're, they're all mainstream. So then, so then I'm, I flew out myself to Germany to meet the leaders. And, uh, and then I wanted it in the UK because I thought, we need something. People, we need something. But I didn't want to be the leader of it. So I sort of brought someone in to try and push to the front and... They absolutely flatlined on their first interview, bro. Because <laughs> that was with that interview, like the guy, the guy asked them, "Oh, how come you're against Muslims or or whatnot?" No, and he no. couldn't give a reason. So, oh, no, 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 it's painful. And it was like, for me, looking at that, it's not a good representation, even of you. It was like, terrible. Mm. It was terrible. It was, mm. it was so cringe. It was, um, but that was a <laughs> do you know what that was? No, because I'd sat with that man, yeah, mm. and gone through his views on everything, and he spilled it all off, and he was great. Put the camera in front of him on the spot from Channel Four, and he just froze. And I sat there afterwards thinking, well, this has just come across so bad. But I spent time with these ex-forces. I think, did he go? He yeah. went out to fight against ISIS. Uh, I think Iraq. Yeah, he went to Iraq and he went to fight against ISIS, if I'm right. Mm. So uh, he he was a good guy, yeah? But he froze. It's like, you, if I stick a camera in front of someone and start asking questions, it's like, uh, like that's what he got like. And it, and it was so, oh, it's cringe. Yeah, it weren't good. It weren't a good representation of an organisation. And that was probably me pushing him forward because I didn't want to lead it myself. So that, that <clears throat> alias, t- obviously... You, you, your original, your government name is Stephen Lennon. I was born Stephen Yaxley. Yaxley. Th- there's all this myth around. Yeah, but look, like mm. I was born Stephen Yaxley. Okay. I was adopted. Yeah. So that's where Yaxley Lennon comes in. So some people say he changed his name because he didn't want to sound posh. Yeah. I weren't posh, right? My mum was one of eight children from this massive poverty. Um, she was, my mum was an Irish immigrant. Uh, I grew up as a working class kid, but I put Yaxley and Lennon together, which was my birth name and my adopted pe- adopted father's name. And then when I got to 16, I thought, why? I don't even want the name Yaxley because my, my dad who brought me up, yeah, his name's Lennon, he's a Scottish fella, and that's my father. Yeah? So DNA don't make you a dad. What you do makes you a dad, and that's my dad. Talk to me about Black Lives Matter again. Sorry? Talk to you about Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's talk about, uh, because you, you, went on, you went on a mad rant, and I, di- and I, fi- I feel that as if that rant was, was poorly constructed. The rant was terrible, man. And they can't... And it went I, I, everywhere. And I, I think, think that it was dangerous due to the fact that it, it could have shifted things from, uh, it, could, it, it could have sparked a full face riot. Yeah, it was, 100%, da- it, was dan- yeah. it was dangerous because when I saw the reaction to the rant and how far it spread and how global, how how viral it went, I then sat there thinking a lot of people are going to turn up next week to defend the memorials because this is a time when the memorials getting ripped down. Winston Churchill, they wanted to rip down and destroy the Commonwealth, as I said, that the memorial for black soldiers was defaced. Um, I thought someone could get killed here in the capital city, yeah? and it's on my head. And I, I did shit myself. Because I, I, if I walk out of here now yeah, and a Muslim comes over and sticks a knife in my head, yeah, I'll wear that. Yeah? I'll wear that because I stand by everything I say against Islam. Yeah? Uh, and I'm, I'm quite comfortable with that. Yeah? If someone wants to punch me in the nose in it, if someone wants to kill me, then I will do it with a smile on my face because I am that principled and I stand by what I, st- what I say on that issue that I don't care about the consequence. If I'm going to walk out and I've got some young black lads who think I don't like them because they're black, yeah, I'm not wearing that hat. Because that's not what I stand for. It's never been what I stand for. When I went on that rant against Black Lives Matter, yeah, people couldn't separate the organisation. And anyone who goes into the history, as I've said, of the organisation, the organisation's website says itself it wants to break down the family. It says itself it wants to push LGBTQ+. If you look at the funding that went into Black Lives Matter organisation, it went into the organisation, many people, to help black people. It was all siphoned off to white politicians for the Democratic Party. Yeah. Well, and a few and a few six million pound homes for the fraud who set it up as well. It was set up mm. by two black lesbian Marxists. Yeah, that's self evident. That's what they say. Yeah, it was to push a agenda. It wasn't to help black lives. And and anyone, a lot of my mates thought it just all. Orga- oh, it just sprung up now. I've been watching that organisation for eight years. I know who they are. Yeah, I know who funds it. I know who's behind it, and I know what their agenda is. And it's got nothing to do with black lives. So I went on a rant. Yeah, we weren't good, man. What about Nick Nico? Uh, yeah, uh, and, uh, well, he pranked video. you. Yeah. Oh, well, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. killed it. Joe, you know, loads of people were angry with him. I was like, what are you angry for? He's, he's done it. He's, 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 it's great. Great humour. And he ruined us. Absolutely ruined us. It was fucking brilliant, man. I think I wanted to vote Nico when he standing as a politician at some point. Yeah, for uh, Mayor for London. Yeah, man. I, I, voted. <laughs> I thought he was great. Man. But, um, Actually, you know, whilst we, were in London, whilst we mentioned London, what do you think about London as of right now? As of right now? Yeah, currently. At this point. Highest crime statistics. People get murdered every day. Kids, kids killing kids, um, and all the London mayor seems to give a shit about is rainbows, pushing some mad shit, and not talking about the real problems that are happening in this capital city. 
So how would you go about like reducing crime if you had the, if you had the opportunity to to do so? Yeah, um, I can't find it, man. I will find it. I'll send you it. Yeah? Mm. Stick it in your podcast. Yeah, we'll do. Because right? we'll then it'll give on a chance to laugh at me. But I'd laugh at me myself because it's a brilliant video. Um, how would I go about reducing it? Yeah. Well, if you look at statistics since you stopped stop and search, yeah, the, the statistics and the figures show that crime and um, severe violence has gone through the roof. Yeah, ah, that's it. But um, yeah, you, you so, but going back to that. Going back to the topic of London, how would you s- reduce crime in London? If how do you- I reduce crime? Yeah, how would you go about doing so? I'd get rid of Sadiq Khan. No, to be fair, everyone hates Sadiq Khan. I see it on Twitter all the time. But like, ha- like, tell me what things you would put in place. You, I know you said stop and search. Is there anything else you'd you'd uh, like to put in place? More law and order. Not less. Not, how what? about we don't have the police officers getting on their knees? How about we don't have them wearing fucking high heels? How about we don't have them um, dancing in uh, gay parades? How about we don't politicise them and get back to being a hard force police force who deal with criminality, not deal with politicised bullshit like they do? That's all I ever see from the police. It's all political. You have become enforcers of political... Id- you, you have become so politicised, so weak, so embarrassing. London police are a joke, yeah? They're a joke. I said, and you have got, you have got serious crime happening. Kids dying all the time, yeah? which is the biggest thing that needs to be addressed. How do you address that? You don't, pr- uh, 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 you don't promote, I, I love H, yeah? Because yeah, yeah, he's yeah. rapping about positive stuff, women and that, yeah? Who's, who's going to go out and want to stab someone after listening to H? You're going to go out and want to ride a bird, yeah? You're not going to be on the level, so I, I, think, I think you want to address it. I, I think the culture that's coming out of the music industry and the encouragement of violence from many of these young rappers who are idols to many of the young kids needs to be addressed. Massively, you need to deal with it. If you, if you What's actually What's your thoughts care. on drill, drill, drill music? Do you ever listen to it yourself? Drill music, yeah. I never knew of any of it until all this, until this year. Until the fee situation. Yeah, and, and my son, and my son liked it, and my son liked it, and but it, it, I believe it breeds aggression. I believe it's, I believe that many, well, they're killing each other. These drill gangs are killing each other, yeah, and they're making rap music about it. But the, at the same time, before drill mu- music was a thing, it was still happening. It's still happening, yeah. I would say maybe it's. Pr- it's put a spotlight to it and they people are kind of baiting themselves out doing it. It's all talking about drug dealing. It's all talking about is drug dealing, violence and stabbing and shooting and criminality. Yeah. And it's glorifying it. And I think that unless you do you really want are you not are you a father yet? No, I'm not a father. When you're a father, do you really want your seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven year old boy looking up to these kids as, as idols? I don't. I want them looking up to many of the young footballers as idols. I want them looking up to the people who are good representations of their community to idols. Not these little gangbangers, bruv. Because these gangbangers are the ones that are burying little black kids. They're the ones burying them. And and are they even thinking about the consequence of it? I see now it's it's like there's no value in life. These kids, this next generation of kids are coming through and they're killing. They don't care. They don't care about the consequence, but they do care. It's like we had a little gang in Luton, Lucy Trap Gang, yeah, when we were growing up. And um, they're, they're all in jail now, but they end up getting 26 years, yeah? They ended up getting 36 years for a gun button and the gun went off. They shot some, some father of three, another little black kid. They shot, they shot him dead, yeah? And this little gang was exactly the same. I watched all of it, glorifying all the violence. And then when I went to jail, I said, you get 28 years. They're a bad man for two years. And, and my mate said, goes, after two years, he's gone. Yeah, because you've you got another 26 years, bruv. You're not thinking of the consequence, not just to you, but the man that you've just murdered. What about his family? What about his children? What about the effect? All of these effects that come from what? Running out and stabbing someone. Whatever happens to putting your fists up? It's like, you know, you said bring security, yeah? Mm. Can I bring security anywhere? Yeah, I'm surprised you only brought, brought your camera, man. Yeah. I, I respect that. I, respect yeah, that. I don't bring security anywhere. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, I, I, on my own demo day, I have all my friends that I've got. But, but, but I walk everywhere. I walk around London, yeah? And surprisingly, what, what sort of reception do you think I get of black people in London? A negative one? No. No, it's mad. What perception do you think I get of Muslims nowadays? I'll say it's better than it was 10 years it's, ago. It's much but... better, bruv. It's, it's so surprising. Yeah? Do you know, even when I had the English Defence League at the height of the English Defence League, most Muslims just want to talk about it. You'll see the little clip where I get punched in the nose or I've got loads of little kids, or little bad boys wanting to have a go at me. But when I was 18, I'd have done that. If I saw me and I was a Muslim and I was 18, I'd stick my... I'd, I'd punch me, yeah? I'd, been, I'd have been that kid. So I understand it, I get it, I get, I get it. But even... Um, what did I go to? What's the... Uh, bashment? What's Bashment? Yeah, I went to I went to a Bashment rave in London. Um, where was it? And it was like a, I was like a rice crispy and a bowl of cocoa, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I see people and these lads, and I went with all black, uh, my, my mates, and they're all black, yeah. And I remember looking, and I, I remember seeing people go, 
Tommy Robinson, what the, what the fuck are you doing in here, bruv? Yeah. Mm. I said, I'm on a night out. What do you mean, what am I doing in here? Because that's it's at the way I've grown up and the circles I've moved in. That's nothing new to me. Yeah? But to so many people, it's a surprise. But I, don't, I haven't had, which really surprised me, and even in my children and my son, my son thought I'd get killed by, uh, when it all blew up because he watches all these little rap gangs that were talking about me. And then we go to London and he's like, Ross, like, when we walk around, I don't get a bad reception. I don't get a bad reception. And I think now more than ever, most people know, if your perception of what you think I am and who you think I am is built on the media, yeah, and then you've seen COVID, you've seen Ukraine and all the bullshit going on over there, you've seen all the lies yeah, that the media are telling you. And you start, and more people now than ever are susceptible to understand the media is propaganda and it's a machine by the establishment to destroy whoever they want. Yeah? And why do they want to destroy me? Because they're reaching people. Why are they just trying to destroy Andrew Tate? Because he reached people. He reached, he, they, they want loads of blue-haired, non-binary, weak pussyholes standing there that they can control and direct however they want. They don't want a load of young men who are strong and understand their identity, who are fit and healthy, who aren't relying on big pharma, who aren't, relying on, who aren't diabetic, who aren't all the things they want you to be a mess. You know, they want you to be an unhealthy mess and they want to control you. And along comes Andrew Tate and starts saying, yeah, you be a man and celebrate being a man and, how, yeah, and all these different things, man. And I, I read a lot of the things about, I know Tate, I knew Tate and Luton. Uh, how, how you, tell me about that story. How do you know him? Um, I'm from Luton. Um, he's from Luton. He he actually, he was a fighter at Storm Gym. The fella who trained him, um, Amir, who's a Muslim lad, because I contacted that gym when I was running his fence league because I wanted my son to go there. And one of my best mates is partnered up there and trains every day with him. And there is not one single person you'll ever meet who would not have a negative word to say about Amir, yeah? He's meant to be, I, I, I just ask around everyone when I was looking at it, and they said he's one of them respected men he's a great man yeah and that's who andrew tate that's that's who i'd say created who we see now as andrew tate but andrew tate has always been i remember it's father's day going back 20 years probably yeah and he put a statement on facebook and it killed me man he, he said everything you might have done yeah so he wrote did you go to your mum today and give her a box of chocolates and tell her you love her did you write a card and he listed everything that you could have possibly done he said, because if you did, you're a fucking loser. Yeah. He goes, you know what I done? I said, Mum, how much money do you earn this year? She said, 25 grand. I sent her 10 years' wages. He goes, that's what a proper son does. You don't love your mum. Yeah. <laughs> and he put all this stuff and I and I'm reading the comments and everyone's going mad. Yeah. Because it's Mother's Day and he timed it perfectly as well. He's always done that. Yeah. Now he's doing it on a global stage. Yeah. Mm. And he's always been strong in his identity. And he's all but but at the same time, I know people who know him very, very well. He's always been a stand-up man and gentleman. Yeah. So all this bullshit that you're seeing and when the media is slaughtering it, I think, no, I know I know him. Yeah, I, I, I went out to Romania. I've seen. I've been out to Romania to see Tate. Yeah, he's a guy. He's a good guy. Right, he's a good guy. I don't agree with his recent conversion, obviously. Oh, yeah. Has, has, have you spoken to him recently? Oh uh, yeah. And and why did he say? Do you believe him converting was genuine, or was it a clout? Is is it a clout move? Um, if it's a clout move, if it's a successful clout move. It, 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 he was gone. Yeah, he's now back in a big way. Yeah, and he's got a lot of he's. We've got a base that's going to back him for everything because Muslims will back another Muslim for anything, yeah? But I think I'd seen him shift in that way because of the alternative of Western, uh, what, we've, what we're what we becoming, yeah? So he's always talking about uh, strong values in the family, strong this, strong that. And what has the church become in the UK? What has it all become? What's the wokeness of all this bullshit? So I think that a lot of the comments, and what he's done is, what he's masterminded is, you see all the left that used to slaughter him as a misogynist. Yeah? Mm. Well, now that's a religious belief. <laughs> now he, he believes exactly the same, yeah? But, and now he's a Muslim. You can't say shit, right? None of them are saying anything against him now. He can sit and say exactly the same, yeah? But it's a protected view because it comes under the guise of religion. But then then again, with, for example, with, with Islam, is, is, is a little different as there's roles a woman has to play and, a, and a, a different role a man has to play. The yep. man has to provide. Which is exactly mm. what Tate says anyway. Mm -hmm. well, that's what I mean. So it suits, it suits where he was going. It, mm. Everything he was saying, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm thinking that there's a lot um, the Muslim community are greater. And there's a lot they're greater. And there's a lot of values they have which they do not budge from. Yeah, But there's a lot they're not as well. So do I believe Andrew Tate believes Mohammed flew up to fucking heaven on a winged unicorn? Yeah, Because that's what it says. No, I don't. Yeah? I don't. Right? But I'd love to have that discussion with Tate as well. Um, do I, do I, say for example, so when I, when did I, my mate went to jail when we were younger, it was whites and blacks against uh, Muslims fight in the town. Yeah, he got four and a half years, come out a Muslim. <laughs> so I went in, get, I went in battling them and come out one of them. Yeah. And um, did I fall out of him? No, I didn't. Yeah, I strongly disagree. So some of my best mates, even I've got a mate, uh, Sully, Sully's mum, I had a St. George's Day event. Yeah. And this is hard for people to get in their head. Yeah. 
So I strongly oppose Islam. That doesn't mean I hate Muslims, every Muslim, yeah, at all. Yeah? Okay, so you can, you, if someone strongly opposed Christianity, does that mean they hate all Christians? No, they're seen as an atheist and celebrated around worldwide. Everyone wants to mock Jesus, yeah? But you say anything on the other side, you're, you're a racist. Well, how, how does this religion, this ideology, get this special protection from criticism that you're not allowed to talk about? Yeah? So, but then I would say the, the reason, for example, I feel like Christian, Christians, they, for example, if someone, someone is to say, oh, Jesus is gay, no that one. no one will buy an eye. And that's, that's not anyone anyone's fault. You're allowing that to happen. If you were to do that to, to, to Muhammad, it will... It, try it, go on. What was you going to say, Muhammad? what? No, if you, if you were to try that... <laughs> you just say it, it? If you were to try that, it wouldn't end well. <laughs> okay, Muhammad's gay. There you go. <laughs> I've been saying it for... No, I'm only joking. It, it's like... No, you're right. They... But but that means that mob rule and violence, so that's what they rely on, yeah? Is that you can't criticise it. But do you know what... Do you know, actually, you know you can't draw Muhammad, yeah? You yeah. know this... Or we'll kill you. Yeah, we'll behead you if you draw Muhammad. Yeah, the cartoons of Muhammad, Charlie Hebdo. Do you know how many images there are of Muhammad? Famous images. Because I was going to do this. I was going to do it as a stunt. What I was going to do is I've got 187 different images, famous pictures of Muhammad, all drew by Muslims, bro, throughout history. This new thing you can't draw Muhammad is new. It's a new jihadi mindset. Yeah, yeah totally, bro. There's fucking hmm. sculptures of Muhammad in, in in museums. There's so much. I'll send you through. There's loads. When you start looking at it, you think he's always been drawn. Yeah, this new thing last 20 years is them dictating to us what speech is. It's, it's the radicals telling us what we can and can't do. It's a total onslaught and an attack on free speech. And if someone tells me not to draw Muhammad, I'll draw him 10 times. So that's because that's just my personality, my nature. You're not telling me what I can and can't do. You're not telling me what I can and can't say. Yeah? You're not dictating to me my speech. I will say what I want. Yeah? I speak honestly about Muhammad. You know, do you know Muhammad? You know, yeah. what, do you, what do you know about Muhammad? Uh, he, was a, he was a prophet of God. Prophet of Allah? In, 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 the, in the Quran. Yeah. He, was a, he was a prophet... Um, yeah, he was a, he was a prophet. Uh, he, like, he, he preached he preached Islam. Mm. He he tried to help people where he can. How old was his wife when he married her? Aisha. Yeah. He married her, at, but remember, it's a different time as well. Back 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 then, <coughs> you you could like it was normal to do I get that. that yeah. Even in certain countries now, Japan. You I think Richard Limehart's wife was eleven. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, mm. but do Muslims accept that something he did was wrong? Back. Now, now it would be wrong, but back then... It, but they not. don't say that. So if you say to any Muslim, any Muslim, yeah, okay, so he married a six-year-old, he had sex with her when she was nine, she had a doll, yeah, she's a little baby. Yeah. Um, what's the law on, in Islamic countries for for when a girl can consummate a marriage? I'm, I'm not... It, when, she starts her period, when she starts her period, bro. That's the Islamic law. Yeah? So that's his, uh, Muhammad was the perfect man. He's the perfect man. No, he's a rapist. He raped a kid, bro. He, he actually, he walks past... Um, he, he tortured a geese called... You just read the biography of Muhammad by Ibn Ishtak, yeah? It will give you an enlightening time on who this man is, yeah? And what I'm saying is, he was a very successful warrior. He was a barbarian, yeah? He weren't no man that we should be emulating, yeah? He beheaded 600 people in one day, Jewish tribe. Beheaded 600 people. He tortured a dude called Kanana for his gold, yeah? Now, these are facts that no one wants to hear about Muhammad, yeah? Successful warrior, but also a paedophile, yeah? basically, in modern time. If you want to look but at it, it's a different time. It's a di even in certain countries <coughs> now, you, you could marry an 11-year-old. I'm yeah, not saying it's they're, right. They're paedophiles. But, but what I mean is, they're paedophiles, yeah? So is Muhammad. So if we're talking openly and honestly about Muhammad, what do you call a 56-year-old man who marries a six-year-old child? You call him a weirdo, bruv. You call him a wrong one. Yeah? And I don't care if it's different times. A six-year-old looks like a six-year-old whenever. Yeah? That's a little kid. Right? Now, I understand things were different, but they don't accept. They still accept that he was perfect. It's not perfect, bruv. That's not perfect. That is immoral. He was an immoral man, but a very successful warrior. So what's your thoughts on the royal family? Because oh, well, it's been difficult. Prince Andrew, a, a bit of a nonce. He's a nonce. He's a wrong one. Yeah. Mm. He's a total wrong one. And, it, and so it's difficult. And then you look at, so I was always a total royalist and loved the queen. And then I look at Prince Charles pushing this WEF, New World Order shit, climate change, nonsense. And he's totally, uh, just it infuriates me if I'm honest. He ain't, he's, not, he's not my king. So... He's not my king. Um, Prince Andrew's a nonce um, who hasn't faced justice. Do you think... Money brought him his way. Do you think the royal family sh should be... Um, abolished. That? Abolished, yeah. Because no, no, they're no, not serving no, anyone. No, I stuff, think right? let's just get rid of... Let's go straight to Prince William because I think he's great. I think he's, I think, I, I, and so is Kate. So I think she's uh, unbelievable. She's beautiful. She's a great representation of our country. Uh, she's class. 
So, what do you think about Meghan Markle? What do I think about Meghan Markle? Yeah, she's a race baiting, total victim status that she's done, and she's pushed it, and now she's making absolute however many millions from doing it. She's played Harry like a total fool. <laughs> like she's come in, took him, and she's now going to be a massive. He'll get dumped. That, that ginger prick's getting dumped. T trust me, he's getting dumped, yeah. man. Harry, you donut, right? You sold out your own family, man. You sold out your own family. It's like, it's just, I just think, oh, you wanted all this privacy. You just done a Netflix series, right? What are you talking about? You said you wanted privacy. The only reason why you're making tens of millions or hundreds of millions, whatever you're making, is because you're a connection to the royal family. Yet you want to sit and slag them all off without actually giving any details of who you're slagging off. Yeah, but she's fit, so. <laughs> Fair enough, Megan. You know, I was. I remember. What, what do you think of the royal family? To be fair, I don't really. I don't. I feel like they should be there, but I don't think I should be giving my tax money to them. Like, no, they already have yeah, enough money. Or that's another one. It's, it's the tax thing. But then, if you look at the amount of money our country makes of tourism due to the royal family, and it, but it, we will still have the castle, even if we will still have everything. She wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. We weren't spending out. We yeah. found out on Harry, will we? I, I, no, I, I don't think... Stop now. No, stop now. Uh, have, stopped. They have they been... Dis uh, uh, yeah, but so I don't think we pay for the security or nothing. They pay. They have to pay for most of their stuff. He was a bit of a lad before, wasn't he, Harry? She yeah. is... She, do you know what? He was she, about... He was doing he this thing. He has just been absolutely pussy-ripped. It's embarrassing. It's been bruv. What are you doing? She, he's just pushing anything. She says... He's, he's flying on private jets around the world talking about climate change. Shut up. Bore off, man. Yeah, I hear it. I remember watching a video... And you, and it was, you're talking about uh, some some people. Just you're talking about people inciting violence, and and saying stuff about you and your children. Yep. And and uh, and this person, he was he was a young guy. He did seem like, like he had some problems. Oh, that was a young Muslim lad, man. He he's still at it, you know. Is he? He's still at it, bruv. He messaged me. I'll, I'll let you read what he said. It's the most disgusting thing. He's still at it, bruv, yeah? But, so he messaged, he messaged up saying, he's going to kill my family, yeah? Yeah. Basically. And I didn't know who he was. So I didn't know what risk he is. So then I, and I called the police, yeah? And I'm not a grass. <laughs> no, I called the police because I thought he's threatening my children here, yeah? And, um, and many Muslims who go on to commit acts of terrorism have been quite weak-minded, vulnerable, mentally retarded and then they've been coerced and manipulated and directed to a terrorist attack. Now, so the first time that clown done a video, I went to the police, I videoed it, I said, are you taking it seriously? I've got kids, I've got this. And they said, yeah, we're taking it seriously. So then I'm waiting 24 hours, 48 hours, nothing. So I think, all right, I'll find out who he is. So I find out who he is and I go and wait outside his house. He comes out of his house at six o'clock in the morning for, for prayers, yeah? And he tries to run. You seen that video? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he tries to run, he falls thing. in his face. And as he gets up, I'm ready, because I'm thinking, you're threatening to kill my kids, yeah? And I looked straight away at him and I saw the vulnerability in his face. So I, re I asked him straight away, have you got mental health issues? Because I looked at him and I just realised. He said he blamed Ali Dawa. <laughs> because this is where... <laughs> Ali, Dawa, Ali Dawa radicalised me. Like, this is where I was going to come uh, um, come in. Because he says he said he was influenced by Ari, Ali, Dawa. Ali Dawa. But at the same time, um, Darren Osborne allegedly had influences from you yeah. and was corresponding with you. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the lie. Total lie. I'll, I'll explain it, yeah? That's total I swear lie. That's the guy who done that, uh, he, sh he tried to throw a, a, was it a petrol bomb at, at Dover? At the immigration oh, yeah, yeah. centre? Yeah, yeah. Do you know his son died from... Sorry? His son. His son. Died from... There's a lot that went on in that guy's life which they just leave out and don't tell you. Yeah? But but still, he still had your influences that may, may have led... led Good point. Yeah, good point. So if and someone, there's probably a lot so, of people okay. who look up to you, yep. who are like, you know what, I'm, I don't like Muslim immigration in our country. If you listen to I, everything mm, I've ever said, I've mm. always spoken about any violence, yeah. And, and what if if the, if the, if the analogy is because Darren Osborne listened to some of the stuff I said, and then he went and committed a terrorist attack. What does that mean that they should silence me? Well, how many people read the Quran that went on and committed terrorist attacks? Went and blew shit up and actually quoted the exact book and verse of the reason why they've done it. Does that mean, in your opinion, in your thinking, that we should ban the Quran? No, that's not... I, I'm, I'm just putting that out there. No, no, I'm asking, <laughs> well, what do you think, though? If someone quotes the Quran as they did, like Lee Rigby's killer, and he says, this is the reason I killed it, should we have a... Should, well, I, I'll say there's different ways to interpret it. I would, like, surely there's parts... There's even parts of the of the Torah and, and the Bible that could be misinterpreted. Let's let's take it back because I think we're going in so many rabbit yeah, holes. Yeah, no, I go like that. But let's take it back. 
Um, yeah. To Darren Osborne and the guy who done the thing. So Darren Osborne, mm. you said he messaged me, yeah? Yeah. It's all a lie. You see that? So I'm I'm walking through London. Yeah? Boom, boom, news all flops up. Tommy Robinson sent direct messages to Darren Osborne. I'm thinking, what? No, I fucking didn't. On a terrorist trial. Yeah. I spent five thousand pounds getting the court transcripts. There was a journalist who I'm not even allowed to mention her name because they give me an injunction. I'm not even allowed to talk about this woman. Yeah. She wrote, and and when I got the when I got so what she said is I sent Twitter DMs. Got all the headlines. Yeah. So you you know how Twitter works. Mm. Me to send a direct message to someone, I have to follow them. Mm. Yeah. The truth being, that was never said in court. Yeah? This journalist, who is an activist, not a journalist, yeah? they wanted to get me removed off Twitter. It worked. They used the fact that I sent Twitter a direct message, which I never did. Yeah? And then they had a campaign straight after that to have me removed from Twitter, yeah? which I got removed from Twitter for making statistical facts about Muslim rape gangs. Yeah? But I said, and do you know when they took the... So what, when I got the transcripts, do you know what was said in court? Which she took as Tommy Robinson sent Twitter direct... And then she said days before the attack. It made it look like to the world... That's when that Muslim made that video, that that mentally ill one. It was in response to that, to this. Yeah? It made it look like I told Darren Osborne to go and do a terrorist thing. Right? I, I'm thinking, who's Darren Osborne? Why, why is my name? I'm not, I haven't been warned that my name's in this court case. Why is my name in this court case? It turns out that the Canadian outfit that I worked for at the time, Rebel Media, which had 2 million email subscribers, he's one of the subscribers for, for Rebel Media. That's it. That's not a Twitter direct message. That's not me contacting him. What are you talking about? But that's what they pushed. So that, again, that's the media. And they pushed that. And <clears throat> I lost my Twitter account. I had people threatening to kill my kids. That mentally ill lad, who when I caught him, um, I ended up nearly scrapping with the police. Because then they plead. So that when I've grabbed him, I've grabbed him, and then I've rang the police. I said, look, and then, and, and do you know the first thing he said? He goes, Tommy, can I arm wrestle you? Yeah, I watched it. I see that. So I thought, man, I just thought he's not well, bro. He's really not well, yeah? And I was all right with him then. And I thought, listen, now I know you, uh, not, you're not well. And then I um, I rang the police and the police come to put... And I said, listen, he's threatened to kill my kids. Yeah, This has gone on, but I'm re I realise he's not very well. They went to get the handcuffs out. And, they, and I'm like, don't handcuff him. Bro. He's not well. He's probably got the mental age of a 10-year-old. They end up arguing with the copper. Well, what are you doing here? I said, oh, you lot ain't nicked him. That's why I'm here. He's threatening to kill my kids. But yeah, that was in response to that lie pumped by the journalist that cannot be named. Um... Yeah, mad. Mm. Have you ever had any DMs of people saying they want to um, do any harmful or violent acts? Oh, loads, bro. I mean, thousands. Oh. I mean, I've rang the police because uh, uh, when they when they talk about my kids or my, or my wife at the time. No, I, I mean, has anyone ever called you, like, messaged you, saying they want to do acts of violence towards that like, Muslims or Im immigrant groups or whatnot? Um, am I gonna out myself as a grass here? No, you, you don't have to say anyone's name. So someone who was quite a prominent activist at some time, um, I got sent a, a message that he'd sent saying he was going to chop up Muslims outside the mosque. Um, and I'd done what I thought was the right thing to do, which was contact the counterterrorism. And said, this ain't on my head. Do you think there's... And then that person mm. was detained and deported from our country. Oh, fucking hell. Mm. Yeah, that's not on my head. Mm. Now, and, and, and I would never want that. And you see, it's, it's, it's like... It's like... It's like if I knew someone, if I saw someone disrespect a, a Muslim woman, I'd nail them. Yeah? If I saw someone disrespect any woman, I'd nail them. Right? So I can have my strong, deep beliefs where I'm opposed to an ideology. It doesn't mean I'm a wrong one. Yeah? And it doesn't mean I promote violence or want violence. I'm trying to prevent violence. But everyone wants to just say, oh, like, the, the headlines you'll read about me are the total opposite. And then, yeah, I've had scraps at times. But I've had to have scraps at times. Do you think that... Far right extremism is in the UK. Do you think it's going to be a problem in future? Yeah, because I don't think it's a problem that it's portrayed as, but it, it will be a growing problem. Of course, it will, because um, when you take away the ability to talk about these issues, when you take away the ability to protest these issues, when you come down and you police and you enforce and you restrict speech, you push people to see no option but violence. So. You, I think we were successful in giving people a platform and an avenue to discuss these issues and feel like they're having their voices heard. When you deplatformed everyone, which is what they did, when you took away those voices, you leave people seeing no alternative. And that's dangerous. So on either side. So I think more speech, more debate, more freedom to talk about it is, is better. And um, But yeah, at the minute, when you see the rise in... in referrals for far-right extremism. That's some little kid who said the Quran is violent. And then they jump on him at school and say, Jesus, we need to send him on a rehabilitation programme. 
this kid like Mate, I had some little kid who's, and you know what they do? They send counterterrorism. So I had some little kid contact me, 16 years old. His mum contacted me. Counterterrorism went around his house because he was at Speaker's Corner and he said Islam is a violent religion. Counterterrorism, because prevent, I'll park counterterrorism. So two plain old officers knock at the door to speak to the mum. What's the mum going to think? Counterterrorism here, yeah? Because your son's radicalised because he doesn't think Islam's a religion of peace because the bullshit we're feeding everyone, he's actually opposed to it because he's got a brain, yeah? And then you've got counterterrorism at your house. It's like, really? That's what you're doing with your police? You want to restrict freedom of speech? You want to penalise? And, and what that does is very successful because that boy and all his friends here, and then they all... How many of them are even going to talk publicly about Islam ever again? They're all scared. It's like everything. They scare, they scare people. And in this country, we don't actually have... You don't need the police and the government to come down on you because they have lots of NGO organisations who will attack you for expressing your free speech. We have one special one called Hope Not Hate. Hate Not Hope, yeah? Which is a a organisation funded by George Soros and their job is to say, for example, you speak up. Say you said something now. And you become a bit... Say you become prominent on here. Yeah? You get a platform and you start talking about certain issues that the globalists don't want you talking about. Open border immigration, effects of immigration, any of these problems. Yeah? What they'll do is they'll look at you, they'll look at where you work. They'll, if you add any advertisement, they'll contact your advertisements. They'll put your address online. Yeah? They'll find your family. They'll put your pictures of your family up. They'll email your family's work. They'll email everyone. He's a racist. He's an extremist. And they just target you. Yeah? until you break. And that this organisation have people doing this 25 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah? That is not freedom of speech. How about, yeah? how about this? Do you think with freedom of speech, there should be a limit? And even let's, no. even, let's go we to Twitter. We already have a limit. Don't we? In, in the UK with law, we have a limit. Yeah. But I, idealistically, yeah. if we were to have that, to start from scratch here, let's have freedom of speech. For example, say Twitter, say Twitter, like, what should, should there be a limit of how far it should go, or no? That, no. That free free should, speech, mm. other than incitement to violence. Other than, mm. So you shouldn't. I don't think you should be able to sit here and incite people. I shouldn't be able to sit here. I can't sit here and say it because I'm gonna just cut that little bit and I'll probably get arrested for hate speech. So, so anyone sitting there inciting people to violence, no, I don't agree in it. Yeah? And I think that there should be limitations on incitement to violence, which there are already limitations on incitement to violence because British law doesn't allow you to incite violence. Yeah. So I. If I'm this big hate figure that some people want to portray me as, I've never been arrested for breaching any hate or racist crime in this country because I just speak facts and honestly and nothing I say is racist. But because they want to limit what I say because they don't want people listening, yeah, mm. they then hate speech. What does that even mean? Do you know what? So Twitter removed me. Do you know what they removed me for? I said 90% of grooming gang convictions are Muslim males and 30% are called Mohammed. Fact. That's a fact. You may not like the fact, or you lefties may not like the fact, some of you Muslims may not like the fact. It's still a fact. Yeah? That's the truth. That's hate speech. So when the truth becomes hate speech, who decides what is hate speech? Well, we, we now know from the evidence that Elon Musk is dropping is that the Democrat Party, Joe Biden's organisation, they were contacting and telling people who to remove, whose voices to take, whose voices to limit. Now, that is leading us one way, and it's not going to be good. Yeah? So Elon Musk comes along. I think Elon Musk is a, he's a genius. He's... Some people would be remembering it. We would be remembered for his success in business. I think if he goes the way he's going, his most important thing he's done. I don't agree with him on everything, and no one would. And I think he's like into microchipping and stuff like that. The most important stance he's going to have ever taken, and the most important stance probably anyone was taking in our generation, will be the free speech issue. And if he stands on free speech, I think he'll be remembered as a hero. And and, and for example. He's come out and said he's doing an amnesty where people who are unfairly taken off of Twitter are going to get their accounts back. Yeah. yeah calling it a big bang. I haven't had my account back. All I said was 90% of convictions. No, let's go to the... Because from what... Because I've been doing extra research and I've... I, I would say I kind of agree with what I heard here. So I remember watching... Uh, it was on Channel 4 again as well. And there was a lot of people saying, yeah, I've, I've been raped by, by certain group, grooming gangs and whatnot. But at the same time, I feel that you're. She she said that she feels that people like you and who bring up those statistics are politicizing their traumas, okay. in a sense. Yeah, and that, as well as that, that lady was Sammy Woodhouse, who is funded by the government, right? And as well as that, I I think the, you could have d done the whole EDL thing a bit better, mm. even from, even from that. Even working with some people who who are Muslims and being like a pedo hunting group type of thing, that yeah, could have worked way better. Yeah, but there was a lot more. You see, there was a lot of things that could have worked better if it was planned. But it was a organic grassroots boom 
remember I was I was working on a building site. Six months later, I'm running the biggest street protest movement in the country scene, and I'm thinking, what do I do here? Like everything, I didn't know what to do. Yeah, I'm just well, we're going this city. Well, this has happened. Well, that's happened. I'm talking about this, and it just it just went like that. So there was a lot that could have been done better. Was it right the way we went into city centres and the way we portrayed ourselves and the aggression? No. Yeah. yeah. And was it helpful? Um, even even I do you know you guys did do marches around Muslim areas and that with that have higher Muslim percent populations, yeah. but with that like that that imagine being a Muslim and seeing that is you're thinking these people are here to cause us harm. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, uh, yeah I get mm. it. No, I get mm. it. But we had to because if we because no one was listening to us, no one would listen to us. So and and when it got to a point. I got five years into the EDL and then I made the decision to leave the English Defence League. How comes? Um, with, with a Muslim organisation, Quilliam, uh, Majid Nawaz, who I fell out with at one time, but I totally respect him now when I watch the work he's doing. Yeah? And Osama Hassan, who was a religious imam, who's one of the nicest blokes I've ever met. Yeah? And I believe wholeheartedly he believes in what he's saying. And he's trying to find a solution to Islamic problems. Yeah? Many of them aren't. Yeah? And I left because I felt we had taken this organisation I, was, I wanted to leave anyway. I left with them because I used them. They used me. I, I left with them because I was going to jail and I thought it would benefit me to leave with them, yeah, to be truthful. Yeah? Um, I think I got a letter from from the judge and shit like that. Yeah? But I also took the English Defence League to a point where did I think it was going to be continually beneficial marching into high-densely populated Muslim cities in our numbers? And I didn't. I thought we took it this far. Yeah? We now need to raise the issues in a different way because no one's got killed. At some point, they're going to... Six Muslims were sent to 30 years in prison for planning to blow me up and kill me. Yeah? They were they were going to attack an English Defence League demonstration. They got pulled over on their way home. They got there two hours late, the idiots. You've got to watch the video, yeah? They get there two hours late. So they walk through an empty car park where everyone was two hours before you clowns. Didn't insure their car, so got pulled over on the way home. And then they did, when they pulled them over, so they seized the car. They didn't search the car. They pulled them over with no insurance. When they get it back to the car place, two days later, they look in the boot. It's all suicide vests, bombs and that. We've already touched on that. Let's touch on you. How old are you? I'm 21. What do you do when you leave school? I, I, I work. I work full time. What do you do? I do marketing. Fair play. Mm -hmm. Go to college? And, and I'm in an apprenticeship, but I finished it in January. Oh, fair play, bro. Yeah. How long was your apprenticeship? Three years? Uh, it was only, yeah. I've done an apprenticeship. I've yeah. done four years. To be fair, doing some research, you're actually a very smart guy. Oh, and thanks. and you have I know you have a lot of money as well. Do I? Don't believe it, what you read. It, 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 yeah. They say, that, so they say, yeah. I've, I've been bankrupt and I've gone through, I read all these papers, he's a millionaire. No, I've had the biggest investigation, financial investigation. I was successful as a youngster. I um, I left school and I've become an aircraft engineer. I've done four-year apprenticeship. And I should never have done it, you know, if I'm honest. Because I was, I didn't fit in. Um, every, I used to go to work and I'd look at people and they were all middle class, yeah. And I'd ask, where are you from? Where do you live? Perton. And then they'd name all these villages. I was, I'm from Lewin, and we're very different. Yeah, it's a very different town. It, we think that I, I just think I don't feel like I fit in here, but like with all these people, with all these people, and I think it was I think it was that they, it was a it was a very successful job. It was a good job. Six hundred people applied for that apprenticeship. I got it. At, I got it at five. But I said I remember saying to my mum, I don't want to be here, man. I want to be on the building site but with the, with the lads. That's what. That's what, <laughs> what a guy. I, that's, what I wanted, that's what I wanted. Summer. Yeah. I, well, I end up qualifying. Oh, nice. Um, Qualifying, I went to work in Manchester Airport for six months at Wilmslow. Found a place called Wilmslow, yeah? Wilmslow and Audley Edge, man. Beautiful place. Like, different world. Like, it's di different world. I hadn't really been out of Lewin that time. So I went to live up there for six months working at the airport. And then I went to jail. And I'm my first offence and I lost my career. And that's when I set up plan. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Last question. If Is, is there any regrets you have and is there anything you would have changed, would have made different if you could, if you could go back? Lots of regrets I have. Um, in the sense of, could have done this better, could have done that better. Would I change them? No. Even the worst parts, even the prison, I believe that, say like, I've had a, I had a very few difficult years, yeah, where I was low and I was problems from, it sounds mad when I was, on, I spent so, time, what have I spent? I've probably spent over a year of so saying more of solitary confinement, which sounds, it, it's hard, it was hard, man. It wasn't hard at the time. But when I come out, I was like, boom, yeah? And then I had the stress and the pressure and all these things building up. And at times I was in a dark place. Um, even just, even last year, even a year ago, yeah? I feel in a good place now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because I concentrated on myself a bit and I concentrated on my health. And I was trying to trying to find that balance. When I started the English Defence League, I was the best leader any organisation could ever have. 
because I was so committed, so dedicated. But at that time, I was probably, well, I wasn't probably, I was a terrible husband. <laughs> terrible husband, not a great dad, traveling around the country. My sole focus was my movement and my progression in this and they're trying to find the fine balance between the two yeah. in the work I do. Yes, I still do a lot of work now. Since I've been deplatformed, I've done, I made six documentaries last year. All very good. I've got an amazing one. And I'll send you a link can't go out yet but um just waiting for the right time because i've had a health scare on one of my family members so trying to find that balance and then having to, and then just going you know what which i've done the last year i'm i'm ta i'm concentrating myself whether it be for two weeks or four weeks i'm having my time yeah and then i'll go mad on my work and finding that healthy balance is put me in a better place because um because the negativity you know i hear people say don't hang around negative people don't focus on negative things that's all i do Everything's so negative. I sit down with girls who've been raped. I hear their stories. I sit down with this. It's all negative. I have m men wanting to kill me, going to my family's houses, doing... It's all constant, man. And then that separated with just trying to be a parent to three kids who are growing up in this awful culture that we've created at the minute anyway, and the world we've created, um, trying to balance that and make sure they're on the right path and trying to do all these things as well as having the courts coming after you. Chaotic, man. Chaotic soul. But I wouldn't change any of it because I think all those negative experiences help to chisel the character and the man you are. So many people, yeah, I, I don't, I regret some of the things and the consequences and the consequences on family, but I wouldn't change one single minute of it. 100%. I hear you, I hear you. And lastly, where, is there, what, what's your plans for the next, like, five, ten years? Is there anything we could see of you coming, coming up? Yeah, so my plans... Any projects? Uh, yeah, I've got a lot. So my plans, when people say, what's your plans? I, I made it to 40. Yeah? Mm. I didn't think I was making it to 40. And I'm serious. At that time, when they got caught for that, that bombing, the, the planning terrorist attack, I thought, they haven't, that's, that order would have come. Yeah. Get him. Get rid of him. Yeah? I've committed, bla committed blasphemy. If I was a Muslim, don't get any ideas, lads, yeah? But if I was a Muslim, I'd be thinking, if I want to cause an explosion in here, yeah? get him. Yeah? So that's how I think. I think what's going to cause the biggest explosion? Get him. He's got good following. People would be upset. So that sort of worry, I felt for those few years, I felt like I was walking with a terminal illness. I thought, shit, man, I'm in trouble. Here. <laughs> what have I done? But um, but yeah. So when I made I made it at forty, didn't think that would happen. Um, um, I've produced in the last twelve months four Rape of Britain documentaries. I produced the total expose. I hope not hate Nick Lowell's <laughs> Eat your heart out. You got annihilated. You got exposed. You got ruined. You're a fraud. You're a scumbag. And yeah, so I've done that. And I've got, but I've also had injunctions from the courts to prevent me showing certain people footage and evidence I've got. I've done an amazing documentary, an amazing film. It's the best one I've ever done. And, um, and they give me an injunction preventing me from ever sharing it. If it's ever shared, I'll get two years in prison. So I expect uh, at some point I'll end up sitting in jail over, the, over that film because the film isn't in my obsession and people want to put it out. And I've been battling it for a little while. When you think of consequence, you know what? You know if you really want to bring about change, you can't think of consequence. You have to just do what you want to do. And, if, and I live 15 years doing that. I don't care. I'm not thinking of the consequence. If I think about the consequence, I'm not going to do it either. You know, if I think about the consequence, I want to say Muhammad was gay, like I did. Because you think, shit, people are going to be upset with that. They're going to want to kill me, yeah? yeah. Or, or the police might do this. I might end up in jail. So if you think like that, then that's going to limit what your ability is to do. And about 12 to, no, two years ago when I got given an injunction, for the first time, I've, whether it's because of the age I've got to, and oh, I'm looking at my kids and seeing the effect it would have on them at this age if I was gone again, I thought about consequence, and it's eaten me up for two years, because I shouldn't have done. If you really want to bring about change and really want to just keep dropping bombs. Yeah, Not literal bombs. But thank you for coming down, man. Thank Cheers, you for coming down, man. I hope you're successful in what you're doing. Yeah? 100%. I I hope hopefully I can get you again like, sometime in the future again. You Mate, know? I'm, I, anytime I'm in London, bro, I'm happy, and I'll just... Uh, I hope you're successful and you get some good characters on and alternative things. Yeah. Cool. Cheers, brother. Cheers.